All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are getting in to Picks and Bands in our first match of the B Group semifinals. This is a game between, on the blue side, Team Undecided going 4-1 and one yesterday. And on the red side, we have the winners of the games against Free Agent Force, Ah Suki Suki, who came in after a one loss to pull out two victories against Free Agent Force and take the series. They look particularly strong, carried mostly by Zen Joss in that last game and Pro Baller as well, mostly seen on uh, Ari for Zen Joss and um, I believe Graves and Lucian were big picks for Pro Baller. So something we can expect to see maybe in this picks and bands coming out. Uh, not really any targeted bands, looks like just strong bands all around coming out from Team Undecided, unless they know something we don't, but uh, Senpai, Senpai might have played Maokai that last game, so uh, that band will get him out of the table, but I don't think Sneaky has been putting up uh, very many Vi games already. On the other side, Hecarim and Shyvana go out of there, um, obviously gotta take Hecarim away from spin uh, and the Amumu ban I feel is, is also uh, a target one. Sejuani immediate Sejuani that is amazing. Slides right through <coughs> Graves Nautilus is something we've seen for uh, Asaki Suki. Of course uh, pro baller on mm -hmm. his Graves as soon as he gets the chance. Absolutely doesn't want that picked away from him again because it did give him a bit of a headache in the early game of that last uh, last one in his previous series. Nautilus as well. Probably going over for Sneaky in that jungle. Lucian as an answer. How does Nautilus answer against Sejuani in the jungle? Are they going to stay out of one another's way or is that going to be a butting of heads? When they... It, they may try and duel off if they find each other, mm. but neither one is really going to out damage it. You have Sejuani's yeah. damage versus Nautilus's tankiness. Sure. It's not really going to get anywhere. Their teams are probably going to <clears throat> collapse if they stay too long, but Sejuani definitely has the faster clear. Okay, so if we were expecting to see any counter jungling, it would likely be from the Sejuani? From the Sejuani, yes. Okay. Uh, well, they came out pretty quickly with their bot lane answer of Morgana and Lucian. I don't know if they expect this Nautilus in jungle or support role. I would probably say if they didn't have any prior knowledge coming in, they would expect it from support. Although that's going to be a giveaway if either one of those gets locked in. Oh, both get locked in. Nope, it's going to be the bomb. Brom for Fish Frog Man. And it looks like Senpai is going to return to that Darius in the top lane. Yep. <clears throat> I want to see how. I want to see what um, Undecided has to say about that Darius. Mm -hmm. Can't leave that unchecked. Absolutely not. It's something that Senpai has gone off with in a couple of these games that we've seen. So, we will be rounding out the rest of the team mid and top of game plan. Game plan. Oh, you lock that in. You lock that in right now. <laughs> Don't you play with my heart. <laughs> we'll see if this comes through. Syndra for Terran 2 the Syndra player of this tournament. I was talking about him before. He, uh... Zed. That'll be a nice change of pace. Zed would be a nice change of pace. We've seen very high burst AP mages, so to have an AD assassin is... Nope, it's Syndra. Still just tunneling in on this Gangplank pick. Let's make that happen. <laughs> Don't you change it on me. Gangplank versus Darius. That would be fun to watch. Gangplank definitely... Oh, oh come on. Cheater. <laughs> I'm going to go see if I can't talk to an admin about making sure that uh, Undecided loses a ban next game <laughs> for unsportsmanlike conduct. <laughs> Zenjoss, last pick, going to grab his mid lane. He has whatever pick he wants. Most mid laners are open, so he could come in against that Sendra with anything he wanted. He could take that Ari or LeBlanc or Lissandra. All Ariana, anything, mm -hmm. really. It's all on the table for him, and so he's, he's got his pick of the litter at this point. I would expect maybe a Lissandra. Uh, that's something he had. That would definitely help with their AOE lockup. A, a huge amount of success. Yeah, it's, it's coming out for him. Um, 
fight, of course, was one he absolutely desolated with. I'm excited to see Zen Joss versus Terran Zero. These, these two are phenomenal mid laner players, so to watch them square off is going to be exciting. Get these trades out of here. There we go. So we'll run through the teams in the top lane for Team Undecided, the favorites of this game. We have Spin or Spin X. I'm, I'm going to assume that's Spin. In the jungle, Dark Lord Popo. Mid lane, Terran Zero on that Syndra that he was doing so well with. And rounding out the bot lane, it's Rich Homie Drake, supported by Valcor. On the side of Asuki Suki, we already saw him play once today. We have Eli Senpai, we have Sneaky in the jungle, Zen Joss in the mid lane as one of the driving forces of his team. Pro Baller on Graves, a very solid AD carry as well. And Fish Frogman rounding out the support role. So we will be getting into this three minute delay here in just a moment as they are getting into their game. Don't want anybody ghosting the stream. Finding out the other's locations. So we gotta get that three minute delay going on in here. And we gotta think Undecided picked up some very big power picks. If Syndra can get a single stun, their pick potential is absolutely insane, following with a Morgana Snare and uh, the Tormented Soil. Along believe, with a lot of Lucian Burst. Yeah, I believe Syndra to be a little bit vulnerable, though, you know. Mm -hmm. Lissandra with her above average, you know, she's not very mobile, but she at least has the teleport claw. Sure. You know, Nautilus, with his mm -hmm. own Syndra, can't get out of that. Right, just press off. Or uh, it would take a black shield from Morgana, but she'd have yeah. to be close enough. And if yeah. she's not in position for that, that could be bad. And then Braum with his lockup, mm -hmm. just... <clears throat> a lot of threats coming out. Yeah. And then for Rumble and, and Rumble and Darius. Now they both put out a lot of damage in that top lane. Mm -hmm. But I believe Darius maybe to come out on top. And the reason being is because Darius has the ability to buy sustain, whereas it's not as good for Rumble to do so. Sure, sure. So just in his buy pathing, I, I suppose. Yeah. And Darius can get that vampire scepter and at least has that have that lifesteal going into Hydra. And then Rumble could buy uh, Will of the Ancients, you know, he can we'll get, get that, that, in, yeah. that revolver, but with Rumble being mainly all AoE, the healing just isn't sure. as good as it could be. I understand that, yeah. Darius, is such a lane bully, too, could starve out Rumble very easily, especially pre-level 6 Sejuani ganks aren't the most effective. They're not anything, it's not like uh, an Amumu where it's barely going to do anything, Yeah, but... It's not going to be as threatening for a Darius. He's not a very mobile champion, so he would have to get a pull back to get her away from a position where she could run him off and get the pull before she headbutts into him. But he could likely push with fewer consequences than if there were such a jungler like Nautilus who could just keep it locked up for yeah. for so long. Rumble's every bit as immobile too, so now pushing it pushing in a little bit of Rumble's favor, if Rumble makes it to the late game, mm, I feel like he will sure. have a bigger impact because of the equalizer. Right, right, right. So eventually Sejuani's going to be I buying a lot of tank items. I can't say who I'd rather have as my primary tank between Sejuani or Nautilus, because they both have a lot of lockdown, sure. and they're both very tanky, and can cover right. a long distance in a relatively short amount of time with their Qs. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> That's absolutely fair. It's just going to turn out to see how these two play it off against one another. Very excited to see this match coming in undecided. And Asuki Suki, undecided, is the higher seed, so I believe they got first pick of their side, which is why they're blue side. I think that is their choice. So, first game of this best of three. Let's see how it turns out. We're going to be loading on into the rift in just a second here. And looking to get a little bit of that early league action going. Everyone's loading in pretty quickly. No more stops and snags hopefully this time we won't get another pause right at the beginning of the game builds rap rumble that mm. guy wins the skin war he does yeah for this first game but his, his machine's not in it he doesn't have his machine it's just a boat 
The That's machine is his boat. No, the boat is his machine. What? Yeah. Wait till the end. In what? game? Yes, in game. The machine is his You're boat. You're pulling boat my leg. <laughs> I don't believe that. Does he get like a hidden movement speed passive in River? Hidden movement. <clears throat> no, but I believe, I believe that would be some sort of interaction with gangplank. Now, okay. I don't know too many people with Build Rat Rumble, so I've never been able to test that, but I remember reading something about it on like the huh. Easter egg page on the wiki. Or something like that. Interesting. <clears throat> People about to load in glitch with the models. Maybe a pause again? I'm not sure. Possibly. We'll give it until about 60 seconds in game time, and then I'll reboot the spectator mode. But I don't see any items coming out. There yeah. we go. Okay, so the spectator was just a little bit ahead. Maybe the delay wasn't as long as it thought it was. Either way, we're live now. Nautilus swimming about, looking like something out of a Mortal Kombat game. <laughs> he does. Look at him. That's right. Okay, but more importantly, the rumble. Okay. Yeah, wow. It's a boat with legs. <laughs> Let's see. A lot of early pinks coming out, both rushing toward this bottom river side. So we may see them just get down some early wards and back off once they get a little bit of vision of one another. Or, hopefully, we see some blood. You know, one um, invade tactic we haven't seen... A lot of junglers start at their blues or their grump, you know, whatever. Not a lot of people have gone to the other junglers' other buff. Mm -hmm. You know, when invading, like, all you want to do is put the jungler or the enemy team behind. Mm -hmm. Why do you have to go face-to-face -face with their team? Why can't you just go take their other buff? That sure. would put them just as behind. Right, absolutely. I'm questioning whether or not they saw, I mean, they would have had to have seen uh, Lysandra when she came by. Right now, there to place that, that ward. Is that red team's drinking? Right. I mean, that ward in the uh, river bush. Is that red or blue team's ward? That is. Uh, uh, that's red, red team's ward. ward. It looks like they and found it. We're finding it. some blood level one. Ooh, good Brom stun passive up on a Popo. Is going down. First blood, and that's to Lysandra. Not the one they would want to get first blood given to. <laughs> Ouch. That's going to be bad. If anyone is going to be able to make something out of that, it's going to be Zenjas. Luckily enough. Thanks to Riot, this game is not yet over. First <laughs> Blood is not worth as much as it used to be. No, of course not. In the game. That is the good news. And there's some good vision from Blue Side. They know where Red is starting. They know Nautilus will be at that gromp, so not entirely at a loss here. Braun, just first auto attack is so good for leashes. All the extra damage you're going to get off of that. Both starting their Gromp, running over to their respective blue buffs, it looks like. So pretty even and standard start from these junglers. And while Red Side did get a good invade off, so to say, because they got the kill, they didn't pull anything but that kill away. They didn't leave any vision in the enemy jungle. Uh, they, they did, it's just it's expired now. Not, no lasting vision, it was all uh, the one minute wards. For the most part, this early in the game, Morgana's going to be in trouble. Very nice. Ooh, crowballer. Usually very early in this game, <clears throat> very early in this stage of the game, people want to sit in their lanes and farm, mm -hmm. or for the jungle, sit in the jungle and farm. So sure. vision in the jungle doesn't do any more than telling you where the jungler is. Which right. usually at level 1 and 2, he's at a camp somewhere mm -hmm. just auto-attacking away anyway. Sure, I mean, there are those junglers that will look for those early level 2 ganks. Sejuani very Sejuani's riskily not... trying to take a scuttle crash. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if she were to get caught out by Nautilus at this point, that would be almost certain death. Darius and Rumble would be trading pretty evenly in that top side. Darius looking to have a bit more sustain, but down a level. Quiet start after that first blood give up. Zenjas used it to buy another Doran's Ring. But that's, he's, a, that's a very strong, because Dorn's Ring not only gives you that extra damage, it also gives you that extra health, mm -hmm. and you refund three more mana every time you get elastic. Sure. Six mana elastic is a lot, especially for early game. Sure, sure. He doesn't look to be, either Terran Zero is playing very safely, or Zen Joss doesn't feel like he can, even with that second Dorn's Ring, contest too much. Syndra may just be the stronger lane bully here. What I feel that he's thinking, and I may be wrong, what I feel he's thinking, 
with that Doran's ring is he has a sizable lead right now. There's no reason to make some really risky move and then risk giving that lead. Oh, what a great, great last second shot to get that stun up and force the summoner heal. That was probably a bit unnecessary for him to heal there. I don't think they could have followed up, but Better still, to be safe than yeah, summer. and good for Red Side for being able to burn that one undecided. Not having the strongest early game, and it looks like we may have a good series on our hands if teams stay this even throughout. Nautilus coming in onto Darius. They're looking to get onto Rumble, forcing another summoner, this time a flash in the top lane. So Joanne might answer with a gank of her own, though, as she's coming around bottom. I don't know if she's been spotted yet, but she sure will be now. Pro Ball is going to have to run out of there. The binding catches. That's going to mean death, I'm almost certain. He does dash out of that one, but he is totally done for here. That's going to be for Rich Homie Drake to take that kill. Good binding by Morgana to make that all happen. <clears throat> Let's see what Lucian can pick up from that. His gold is now at 1,200. So he may wait for that BF sword before he goes back. This could be an early dragon. And they look to take it. <clears throat> Red team has no idea what they're doing, so we can safely assume this will be dragon number one for blue team. They don't have any vision of anyone from that red side, but I don't think red... Red has no idea. Not a clue. So that's going to go down. <laughs> you can still see the particles. And dragon goes down for the blue side at 5 minutes and 54 seconds. So we can still see a very early dragon fight. We, we'll see the fight for dragon number two happening around the times when sometimes the first dragon fight starts. I always do like seeing those early dragons go down. They help accelerate the game a bit. Yes, very much so. You know, I've always felt first dragon is a little weak. I always felt like that's one of the weakest buffs. 6% AD and AP just isn't that much. It really isn't, especially because the first dragon goes down in the early game before everyone has those scaling items that are actually going to make it very potent. Right. It's, it's entirely a different story if you're sitting on two or three really big items. Especially once you get uh, fifth dragon and then oh, it's yeah. double. But Darius is consistently losing these trades up top lane. He's, yes, he's bullying out. He's even in CS, up a little bit in experience. We saw him hit six before Rumble did. But still, not, uh, not doing the absolute best and having a hard time conserving a lot of that mana, which against Rumble is, I'm sure, a difficult task. Because Rumble's not going to be bound by that same constraint. He's just going to have to manage his overheating, which if Spin is good enough of a player to pull that off and consistently be able to do that, could be a headache once Darius is low on the mana. Lucian turning it back around. Braum missing the shield. Popo again here for a gank. Going to slam onto Fish Frogman. The binding, that's going to be another kill for Rich Homie Drake. He's 2-0 and oh now. Well ahead of the Graves at this point. Popo with another successful gank. Bottom. Great job on that Sejuani to come back after that first death and say, you know what, I'm going to make plays on this map. Even if I myself am a little set back. I'm going to make sure that my teammates can get where they need to go. Oh, in the top lane, Senpai dies, but we're going to focus on Sneaky right now, who is going to die for that blue buff, staying around way too long. Popo flashing in front of him, denying him to drag on a little bit longer. Pro Baller now is going to be in trouble, but here comes Zenjoss doing a lot of damage on the back line. Popo comes over the wall, but he may not live against Zenjoss. Zenjoss flashes back in, not, so, not flashes, but takes the claw back in to his death. Terran Zero going to take that one with Syndra. Take it right out of Lucian's hands. Sejuani now two kills. Syndra a kill. And in the top lane, Darius died to Rumble. So, holy cow, what a good bit of action. And immediately, Blue Side is in the driver's seat. It seems like every time Red Team wants to make a play, Blue Team is just... They're, they're also there. They're doing whatever they're doing better. Sure. They're just slightly more bloodthirsty. Absolutely. You saw that in the bot lane win. Graves and Braum were trying to attack onto this Morgana, and instantaneously there's Sejuani coming in to get a kill onto Braum. The only really unaffected part is top lane, and that was just 
Rumble getting a solo kill onto Darius. Rumble right? can win top by himself. So sure. Not That's such a security for a team, too, because now Nautilus is having to be drawn to the top lane, whereas the rest of this map can, can have Sejuani all to itself. There's going to be the pull in, the ultimate from Nautilus. A lot of damage coming on early on. Looks like the dunk may come in any second. Now another good pull. There's the dunk for the execute. Returning a kill right on to Rumble. Good job from Darius and Nautilus. You gotta love Nautilus. He's, mm. His ganks aren't relatively hard to understand. No. And for all intents and purposes, you can't miss that Q. I mean, they're locked right. in for so long. Absolutely. Just roaming CC. They have a good idea where he is. I don't think they... They do have vision, yeah. They just stepped over that ward. So, that will be telling. I believe Red Side has vision of Sejuani as well. So, both of these are doing a good job of keeping track of the other's jungle. And you can see when Sejuani's not there, the bot side was feeling free to push up. Now, Lucian obviously has punished them for that. Good use of the Kulig to deny Frogman any position and keep some great damage onto him. But, ooh, another binding. That's got to hurt. That's a Morgana lane for you, though. You hit those bindings, Lucian follows up. It's an incredible headache for Brawler at this... Baller at this point, sorry. <clears throat> Aside for coming down for the roam, Morgana does not have a ooh, 3v2. They are extremely pushed up, but they're relatively safe. Because teleport Rumble from in Rumble. With the teleport. Sure. That's going to give Darius some free time to push around. Rumble probably should have saved that teleport for a minute or two, or a second or two later when they would have actually been pushed in and he could teleport behind him. But since he just teleported in like this, he's just bot lane. That's all that means. That's all that teleport was good for, is making sure he got bot lane. He didn't get behind anybody, no positional advantage. They all just kind of backed off their separate ways, and now Darius is free to push top, which he should be doing relentlessly. Get those attacks in, Darius. Cinder's coming out to stop him, though. Cinder should be able to absolutely melt Darius very quickly if she got a stun off. 40 up in CS and a whole level up as well. So that tower is going to be safe for now. Meanwhile, Braum getting caught out by the Sejuani ult. He's going to ult himself, knock a couple people up, but it's not going to do a whole lot. Valakor getting in trouble. Pro Ball is going to be forced out of this one. Rumble chasing them on down. Darius is here, though. He got the teleport in. He's going to get the kill onto Valakor, but now Rumble has died. Or no, sorry, Nautilus has died at the hands of Rumble. They're trying to run away. Great, great, great three-person snare up by Lysander, but she's going to go down as well. Dark Lord Popo killing spree now, and Dragon number two looks to be easily in the hands of of the blue team at this point. Lucian may be able to even kill Darius right here. Yes, there's the killing spree. Good dash over the wall to get the kill, Lucian. Rich homie Drake. Coming up big in this first game. Three kills, zero deaths, five assists. He has 78 CS to his lane opponent's 44. That is amazing. Graves is just apparently not on his game today. Mm -mm. Look at that too, top lane tower. Going straight down. And a dragon. Normally it's the other way around. You want to take their top lane tower if their top laner's down there to teleport. Yeah. But instead, mid laner, not even necessary for that fight. Terran Zero, one of the stronger members of this team right now. Only one kill to his name, but 128 CS. How much gold does he have? Almost 3k gold. Can go back and finish the death cap, finish a Zonyas, finish really any item he wants that builds out of that needless. Yeah. Uh, I believe the loot and Zeko might be on the table. Those are the only three. Yeah. I'm just glad that there are three. <laughs> well, there's always been three. It's just loot and Zeko replaced Death Firegrass. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I had a bit of an emotional moment. TYDFG. <laughs> okay. Problem with some good Relic Shield procs, but look at this. 13 minutes in, and I already have 5k gold lead. That's just absolutely nasty. Morgana ult, the illusion, culling. It's going to take him out, but it's going to go over to Valcor to pick off that last little bit of damage. Support getting the first kill on the board for them. Senpai is getting shoved in so hard by spin. 
That's just a terrible position to be in if you're Darius. Nobody likes playing Darius from the back foot. <laughs> so he's going to stay there and take a lot of minion harass so as not to lose them to the tower. Meanwhile, Rumble and Lysander could butt heads here, but I don't think they're going to go. And Lucian just punishing the Tower of Graves. Nothing he can do. Just pushes him right underneath. One piercing light does that much of a chunk, health chunk. So, Oh, the dash in and the double shot. And he's already nearly at half health. That's brutal. Looks like both teams are on the lower side of the map. Nobody's in the top lane right now. And Darius probably shouldn't have left. He should just be still up there. Oh, red turret goes down, but then the Darius comes in onto the Syndra. She's going to go down at the hands of Zenjoss, who is as well going to die too. Syndra Senpai now is getting destroyed. His health bar is going so low, but he may kill Spin beforehand. No, he does not. Sneaky is now going to have to flash out two for one at the hands of the blue side. It was a good pick on Sindra, but they stayed a little too long to try to fight the Rumble and Sejuani when they just don't have the items to compete. Sejuani is 3-1-6. and six. She has Ranger's Trailblazer with the Cinder Hulk and Catalyst, which is giving her a lot of extra beef, and only the Cinder Hulk for Nautilus. So he's not going to be able to help that sustain. And Darius had to be forced onto some defensive items pretty early yes. just to yes. deal with that rumble whereas rumble built the leandries for that damage so he is just in a much better position to take control of that fight and pull, pull it in his favor this could be bad in the bot lane as well they're getting pushed up with absolutely no answer right now from ah uh, sookie sookie it's not a good position to be in if you are red team and you're having the entire bot lane pushed up to second tower with no response. Nautilus, granted, is coming around now, but he's too late. He needed to be there 30 seconds prior, and he wasn't able to make anything happen out of it. It was that Luden's Echo to become the first needless item built in by... The Syndra. Nautilus is around. Spotted by a ward. Pinged out, so they definitely know he's there. Bot lane four. Uh, Suki Suki should be able to push in onto Undecided's tower. Lucian may just finish the red and come straight there, or he may go mid, as it does look to be a place where a push is building. Ooh, but Nautilus could be caught out here, especially if the binding from Morgana hits. She's going to lead off with the ultimate. That's going to be an immediate stay. The Cinder Stun comes in as well. Gets a very easy kill onto Nautilus. Nothing he can do. Tower may be going down pretty soon here. Not sure if they're going to try to take that or not. It looks like with this wave that will be going down. Zenjoss is going to have to get on out of there. Lysander is not going to be able to do too much in this instance. Fish Frogman almost getting hit by the stun of Terran Zero, but it's not going to fall through entirely. Pro Baller is on the side, but I think he's been spotted and they may be coming for him, or at least to push out this bottom tower. So good, good positioning from Team Undecided here. Undecided entirely in control of the jungle. No one from Asuki Suki is doing a great job. Ooh, three man stun into the equalizer. The Sejuani ult comes out as well. Sneak is going to get down. Fish Frogman will be the next one to fall. Spin may die, but Senpai goes down first. Terran Zero taking that tower aggro away, saving the life. There is four kills. For absolutely nothing, Pro Baller the only one left alive on his team. And the tower looks to be going down as well. Sindra has the blue buff, so a stun could come out any second now. And that's going to be Pro Baller having to back off. Free turret for that blue side. And look at how well they've timed this push. Immediately killing the Scuttle Crab and getting in control for Dragon. I think this is the most in-depth strategic control we've seen out of a team today. They are definitely on top of their game. Mm, this is great to watch. I feel sorry for whoever has to play against Undecided next. Of course, what am I saying? I know, we I have think two AGA more games. Is pretty prepared. 
Nice hook on Morgana. I don't think how now she's going to die. The Braum, if he can get the last bit, Pro Baller getting that proc, that's going to be some much needed gold onto him. If he can get anything, this last auto attack onto Sejuani, no, she's going to get away, but then they are chasing her. Zenjos is coming up fast, so Lysander does have some ability when that claw comes off cooldown, but Cinder is here to protect, and the Nautilus hook does not come up, so it will not be a kill today. Wise to push up when Morgana is down. Morgana's one of those champions that's a bit harder to push against. She has so much of a natural uh, tendency to do well under or around towers, whether or not she's pushing them or being pushed to them. Yes. And very hard to dive. One of those champions that works well with the tower. And this Morgana is relatively heavier on the AP mm. in terms of support, so that shield definitely has a good amount of health on it. Sure. She's already got her Frost Queens. Uh, done and completed and looks to be going immediately toward that Zanyas. We'll check her gold now. Only 200, so it's going to be some time before she gets that uh, needlessly large rod to bring in for that exact. But uh, that is what looks to be next on the item build, and she's, if not already terribly scary, going to become that much scarier in another thousand gold. You see Darius building, building even more magic because this rumble <laughs> has instilled such a sense of terror oh, into man. him. <clears throat> oh, the steal! The spin gets that last little bit, but meanwhile, Graves, Lucian. dead to Lucian. Doesn't even look like there was much of a fight. Looks like Lucian just picked him up and picked him off. Lucian has a completed shiv over Graves. There is nothing Graves can do to win that. That's deal. a second Lucian shiv build we've seen today as well. Electing that static shiv over the Trinity Force. And look at how far ahead Lucian is. 7 0 and 7 coming out for Rich Homie Drake. Absolutely disgusting lead over this Graves. Graves has 94 CS at 21 minutes. 63 lead, if my Ugh. math is correct. That is amazing. I'll leave the math to you, <laughs> but I'm going to trust that is correct. Baron coming out. Four of blue side. Very bold for them to want to do this with the entire enemy team. I don't, team of I don't think Red does knows. Not have any wards. On not a clue. No, we go to Red Fog of War, and they just kind of know that Cinder's hanging around mid lane. They must all assume uh, that the rest of them are in mid. Baron, Baron is goes dead. down. Wow, twenty-one minutes into the game. If this wasn't looking bad enough for our friends in Osaki Suki, it is now. As Team Undecided claims the first Baron of the game. Fourth Dragon hasn't even spawned yet. We normally talk about Fourth Dragon and First Baron being uh, sort of comparable objectives. We don't even have that objective on the board, and when it does come up, that's going to be something that uh, Team Undecided can just stroll in and take, too. Most definitely. Oh, 13,000, or now 14,000 gold oh, lead. 14, 22 minutes. This is a stomp. Undecided is showing them who the superior team is. Oh, Absolutely. There's a reason they were 4-1. and one. Only loss they experienced yesterday came at the hands of AGA, another favorite for the finals. Of course, anything could happen. AGA is playing with a somewhat different roster today. Oh, Terran Zero. Good pickup. This whole classic Syndra burst. Get the ultimate. Syndra didn't even drop Ignite there. Did not. All she needed was didn't one need stun it. and her ult. Ugh. That Luden's Echo and Void Staff doing a lot. The Void Staff... I feel pretty much exclusively bought for Darius. Most likely. So, well, Lissandra also has that Abyssal Scepter to negate. Gotcha. Yeah, you're right. It's just very rarely do you see Abyssal Scepter being built second unless it's in direct answer to uh, Champion. And you see there the damage it just did to Senpai. She knows what she's doing. Fish Frogman getting taken half health now. Meanwhile, Rumble's just pushing all the while in the top lane. going to take this tower. These Baron Mans are doing absolute work. Last Outer Tower falls. Whoever's idea it was to make Baron buffed cannon minions mm. attack tower nope. outside of range. Nope, nope, nope. Not a fan of that person's idea. Probala gets hit with a nice binding. That's 
certain death as Terran Zero is instantly able to follow up with just the classic Cinder combo. No ult needed. The ult save for Braum, which is going to take out immediately. Nautilus ult comes out. Sejuani trying to go in. Zenjoss is in a lot of trouble here, though the teleport is coming in from Rumble. Rich Homie Drake is ulted by the Lysander, but he's not going to die. Now it looks like the last couple are going to go down as Senpai and Sneaky fall to the ground with their tower following not shortly behind them. That's inhibitor. GG's are coming out. The surrender. The first game hands down gone straight to undecided. Terran Zero did not give them any breathing room. Oh no. She shoved her gold as far down their throats as physically possible. Look at all those impressive stats. 5, 1, and 10 for Sejuani. 8, 0, oh, and 9 for Lucian. 5, 1, 8 on Rumble. And just in that top lane. Most of those were solo kills, I feel, too. Um, that's probably unfair to say, actually. Um, but he did get some good solo kills in onto Darius, right. forcing him to build that MR. Three, one, three, and seventeen for the Morgana. The only one that's not directly positive kill death, but easily positive KDA. And Syndra with a six, one, and eight. What an incredible match! So we're gonna get into game two as soon as possible. See if they can mount a comeback, or if they're gonna be in any trouble here. You can look and see that AGA is in game. We have uh, Lucian for Forsaken Pickle, uh, Shyvana on Colo Joe, Not Phil Phil, the new mid, playing Syndra, so that's another Syndra we can expect to see today. Vi for their jungle, and on support it's Morgana. So we'll update you on how that game goes when it's played. In the meantime, I feel like we're going to be sticking around to watch the next one of the Team Undecided versus uh, Team Asaki Saki. In the meantime, actually, let's let's hop in and spectate just a bit of this, because we're going to have to deal with a long delay anyway for the next game, and let's right. just keep the league action rolling here. See, poke in on our other favorites for no, the finals. Miss, playing his Jungle Bard again in a mm. week and a half on this game. Finally a Cinder skin. <laughs> Jesus Christ Cinder. <laughs> One of my personal favorites. Justicar Cinder. Looking good. Oh, and this game looks pretty even. At least in kills, although the gold is in the favor of AGA as well as the push. You see a very similar Bard build to the first one this mm. time with Whitson instead of Nasher's Tooth. I'm interested to see what kind of damage he can put out. Speaking of Nasher's Tooth, Nasher's biting hard with that buff on the minions. It looks like Colo Joe could be getting in a lot of trouble here as well. Ocelot's Tears jumping in onto Gibsathon, killing that Lulu. Bard goes down as well. This is easily a fight for AGA. Looking like the first game may go to them as they pick up a nice binding combo with Forsaken Pickle to do the damage there. So AGA is in a great position at this point in the game. Wow. Love to come in with all this action. Why do we even need early games? <laughs> Why doesn't everybody just start here? <laughs> just start with half your items. <laughs> okay. Shyvana's gonna run split the top lane. She does she does have teleport. Yes, that is up. Meanwhile, her teammates are taking this inhib tower, probably going to be able to take the first inhibitor too, although they have to be careful and mindful of Articus's Zed. That's another thing we need to touch on. We didn't see Zed prior to today. Shyvana already teleported in. Okay, <laughs> that's how scared they are of Articus. They know that's nothing. Zed, Zed doesn't have... Oh, oh Vi's going in, immediately killing Adamander, and Zed follows suit, getting killed by Forsaken Pickle, but most of that damage was from not Phil Phil's Cinder Colo Joe chasing onto Bard. Now he's going low. Maokai may be in trouble as well. He's not have a tower to fall back on. Dragon's Descent comes down onto Gym Leader Vaz, and he's flying away with that tunnel. Shyvana's is following, following through, through the tunnel. tunnel. Oh, no. He's immediately stunned, and Bard is safe to fight another day. Point being, that is the inhibitor. 10k gold. We started at 5k, and just in the two minutes we've been watching, we saw that stretch to 10k, now over 10k. Second inhibs going down. Good black shield onto Phil Phil, because that uh, Lulu damage could have been absolutely crippling. And they're going to back right off. Wow, what a time to join the game. Eight towers, three. Let's take a look at those. Oh, impressive CS on that Lucian for 32 minutes. 32. 270, wow, yeah, that is Forsaken Pickle. He is the highest ranked member of that team. He is uh, heralded as kind of the, the one of the best mechanical players in this entire tournament. The kid is 17 years old, uh, I'm sorry, 18 years old, and uh, and is 
absolutely, he's uh, finishing up high school this year, um, and just so darn good at League of Legends. He's a uh, Diamond Four, I think. Couldn't tell you for sure. Uh, it looks like it's actually. Uh, one second here. Uh, start over. Don't worry, we'll hop into their game in just a second. Uh, Want to see the end of this one, and that three-minute delay is going to give us plenty of time to talk about pick, picks and bans. So it's not really worry. We don't need to see that draft phase last for seven whole minutes there. Oh boy, this is going to be big if Bard. Bard gets caught out here but Zed is right there to defend and Vi's getting in trouble but they ult onto the Zed and he's going to be able to walk away now Maokai getting damage good ult from Morgana also looks like it's going to get at least one maybe two the Zanyas to save the life at the very end while Zed gets caught up knocked into the Lulu gets the ultimate that's going to be one dead Lulu though Ocelot's tears limping out of there but Sivir flashes in for the kill two kills now for Sivir not Phil Phil still alive Dragon's Ascent coming in Lucian gets a kill onto Bard somewhere off the screen and Adamander's going to go down double kill to Syndra barely making it out with a little bit of health there and that looks like it's going to be the game coming out for Asian Girl Anime is going to pick that one up really nicely done And so there you have it, Team Undecided taking the first one of their set in a huge stomp. Asian Girl Animes doing the same, looking absolutely great here. So we'll check up back on AGA, going to go back and spectate Team Undecided as they are running into this next game. So once we're done with Champion Select here, we'll get into Suki Suki's game versus Undecided and see where that is. It's going to be a little bit of a break before we can get in and deal with the three-minute delay, so we'll get back to that in just a minute.